Hello, I'm Julie Sawyer with the Haywood Cooperative Extension and I am the Family and Consumer Science Extension Agent. A lot of my programming deals with home food preservation and food safety and one of those topics that we cover is fermenting. Today I'm going to cover a very popular subject, kombucha. Uh, we're going to talk about how to make your own at home. So what is kombucha? It's an effervescent cider-like drink. Um, technically it is fermented sweet tea. It is produced using a starter culture referred to as a SCOBY and in a moment I'll explain exactly what that means. So you can get kombucha commercially at just about any grocery store or food store. Um, as you can see here this is one brand that you can find out there. For today's experiment and demonstration, I purchased the one with the least amount of added ingredients. So in addition to buying kombucha already brewed, you can also make your own homemade kombucha. So you might be asking yourself, why is this such a popular product? And I'll tell you, it is for the nutrition and health benefits. Kombucha contains beneficial live bacteria, yeast, organic acids, B vitamins, antioxidants, and trace minerals. It has about 30 calories per eight ounce servings, which has about two to three grams of sugar in it. So let's talk about the ingredients for kombucha. Making your own kombucha means that you want to have a safe, hygienic kitchen. Clean equipment, clean environment, by doing this, you minimize the possibility that your kombucha could get inoculated with um, mold and bacteria that you don't want in there. So you always want to wash your hands well before handling your SCOBY and make sure again that your equipment is clean and sanitized before starting. So the ingredients for your kombucha are four to eight green, black, or a combination of green and black tea bags. So today I'm going to use half green and half black tea bags to make our kombucha. You're going to want one gallon of filtered water, a cup of cane sugar, and then one to two cups of a kombucha starter fluid. Now this might be from a, a batch that you've already started, or you can also use a commercial store-bought batch. And then of course you need your SCOBY. Now if you are choosing to use the SCOBY, you could use the SCOBY from the batch that you've already brewed or the store-bought kombucha does contain starter SCOBY in it in a smaller amount. If you choose to go this route, it will take a little longer for your SCOBY to form. You can also purchase a SCOBY to make your kombucha with. You can purchase these online or there are some stores that sell these and we'll have that in the handouts that we send out, some resources as to where you can purchase a SCOBY like this one to brew your own kombucha. These are examples of kombucha that I started with the commercial starter I'll take this top off just so it's easier to see. So this has been about five days and if you look inside you can see that the SCOBY is starting to form on top. It's still kind of opaque and swirling but a few more days this will start to come together and form more of this pancake like SCOBY. So what kind of equipment do you need to make kombucha? It's very simple. Uh, you need some kind of container that you can heat your water in. Um, a tea kettle works best, but if you don't have that, just uh, a pot from your kitchen works just fine. You need a vessel to actually brew the tea in. This is a one gallon glass jar. So glass jars are good for making your tea in. If you don't have this size, you could break it down into smaller quart jars or even half gallon jars. You can also use a stainless steel vessel or a food grade plastic vessel. Um, you're gonna need a coffee filter or a fine weave towel to cover your product to keep insects out of it while it's fermenting. 
Um, you'll also need a rubber band so that you can hold that on there, like so. And then once your product has finished fermenting, you're going to need some kind of jar or bottle to put that product in until you're ready to drink it. And then of course it's optional, but a funnel always makes the process a lot easier. So let's go through the steps of making the kombucha. The first thing that you want to do is heat your water, uh, bring it to a boil, then you're going to add it to your fermenting vessel. Now, the next step, you're going to add your tea bags, and again, as I said, I mixed green tea and black tea. I have a couple of examples here, but I've already done this. So I used eight tea bags. I just put those down in that hot water and let them steep for 10 minutes. Now after 10 minutes, you want to remove those tea bags. Now I only, as you can see, only did a half gallon because I'm gonna add cold water um, the rest of the way up so that I can quickly let this finish cooling. So before, while your water's still hot, you wanna add one cup of sugar and let that dissolve. And so I've already put a cup of cane sugar in here and let it dissolve. So once that's cooled down, and started to cool, you want to bring it to room temperature before you add the SCOBY. So now I have the rest of my water in the refrigerator cooling. I'm going to grab that and add it to this and we'll go from there. So I've retrieved my cold water out of the refrigerator. I'm going to add it to this to help cool it down faster. And again, we do use filtered water. We are going to be also adding a couple of cups of our starter liquid, so I'm going to be sure and leave room at the top for that. So I think we'll stop right there. So I've added the cool water, which helped this come on down to room temperature. It had already been cooling prior to that. So my next step. Um, also, I, while I was uh, retrieving the water, I washed my hands. So our next step is going to be to add the SCOBY. Now earlier, uh, I mentioned that um, the SCOBY is what is used as the starter culture for our kombucha. So SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. Um, this is, it looks like a flat pancake or a mushroom. Um, some folks refer to it as a tea fungus. And as you can see in this kombucha here, we have a very nice SCOBY growing on top. And we're gonna actually um, use some of this to inoculate uh, this tea to get another batch of kombucha started. So in addition to washing my hands, I also like to use gloves just to make sure that we are in as clean an environment as possible because again, we don't want to introduce any bacteria or mold that could cause this to spoil. So I have a dish that we're going to take this SCOBY out and then divide it. So I'm going to use these clean tongs and go down in here and get a hold of this. Now I see, now that I've picked this one up, that we have this small one that formed underneath. And this is the one that we want to use to inoculate our new batch of kombucha. So I'm just going to drop that down in there like so and we'll put this one back. And so the, hopefully what will happen is it will start to also grow another new SCOBY underneath that for our next batch. So again, we have our SCOBY in there. Um, your next step, it's real simple folks, you're just going to cover that. I like to use these coffee filters you could also use cheesecloth or a real thin, fine weave towel. Take a rubber band, snap around there, and there you have it.
So once you've covered this, you want to allow it to ferment at room temperature for about seven to 14 days. And as I said, a new SCOBY, uh, this SCOBY will start to grow and then it might also start to grow another one under that. Now that we've added the SCOBY to this sweet tea, the next step is to add two cups of our starter liquid, which is just the kombucha. Now I could take the starter liquid from here, um, but I could also use this commercial bottle of starter liquid, which has a little fizz to it. So we want to do two cups, and this is, um, this is about two cups here. Um, so we're just going to add this in. And it's a very important step. You have to add the starter liquid. And of course, it also contains some of the little pieces of the SCOBY culture as well. So now we have the SCOBY. We've added the starter liquid, which is the, the commercial kombucha. And again, I could have used the liquid from here, either way. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, if you don't have a SCOBY, uh, you can just start with kombucha, commercially processed, um, and just add that to your sweet tea. It's going to take a little longer for that to ferment uh, and for your SCOBY to form, but it, it will happen. So now that I've added those things, I'm going to cover this up with a coffee filter and put my rubber band on. And I want to let this sit at room temperature for 7 to 14 days. A new SCOBY should develop on the bottom of the one that we added in, um, and then uh, that can be taken off and used to start yet another batch. To make your kombucha using the commercial starter, you want to, uh, you'll see a light haze start to form, which is, which is what we have in here now. Uh, then that light haze is going to turn white, get a little more opaque, and then start to thicken. Um, like the SCOBY that you saw in here, or like this, this purchased SCOBY here. Now, after about a week, you want to check the flavor of your kombucha. Uh, if you like that flavor at that point, then stop fermenting. Um, if it's not quite where you want it, then put the cover back on it and, and let it ferment a little longer. So once you've decided that you do like that flavor and you're ready to stop fermenting, you want to pour your kombucha into some clean, sanitized jars or bottles. You could even reuse one of these bottles if you wanted to, um, as long as it's clean and sanitized. Now, when you pour your kombucha, when you bottle your kombucha, you do want to retain the SCOBY and about one to two cups of your starter liquid for your next batch. Um, so you could then add that to a new batch. However, there is another process called continuous brewing that, that we'll uh, take a look at in just a moment. Um, now, once you've bottled your kombucha, you can also flavor it. Um, now, if you decide to add a flavor to the kombucha, you want to do, uh, you can flavor it with 10 to 20% juice or some type of clean fruit that you like. You could also experiment with herbs and spices. Now, once you've bottled it, uh, you can cap it tightly um, and hold it at room temperature for about one to three days um, for some carbonation to form, or you could just go ahead and refrigerate it. Now, if you hold this at room temp capped for more than three days, it could result in an accumulation of carbon dioxide buildup and explode. So no more than one to three days. Um, there are some other um, accessories out there that you could purchase, an airlock that's going to help release or burp that uh, carbon dioxide out. But again, if you just simply cap it, uh, you want to be careful about that buildup because it could explode. So once you've bottled your kombucha, and again, you've saved your starter liquid and SCOBY, um, you can use the continuous brewing process. So what that means is that you would just continue to add your cool, sweetened tea to the retained starter liquid and SCOBY that you have in this vessel and just continually use that vessel. 
Um, again, it is critical that your environment is clean and sanitized, that you're uh, washing your hands uh, so that you don't introduce any unwanted mold or bacteria into this product. Now, if you're using the continuous brew process and you see that you have yeast or some undesired growing in here, at that point you need to discard what's in there and, and clean the container. Okay, that's all there is to making kombucha. If you have further questions, please email me at the email address that you see on the screen below. And for written directions for making kombucha, you can access that on the Extension website or the library website. Thanks so much.